The Met Gala happened this week, and celebrities brought out some show-stopping looks. A look at the fashion risks taken. And the City Girls stopped by Virginia Tech for their spring concert this March. What students thought about their performance? All of that and more coming up on Entertainment Tech. Hello, and welcome to Entertainment Tech. I'm Sophie Page. And I'm Kenyon Gregory. The Virginia Tech Fashion Show hosted its most recent show on April 24th in Squires Commonwealth Ballroom. The show was called Opulence Reimagined, Old, New, Borrowed. It was meant to, quote, visualize the parallels of late Renaissance and modern culture through fashion. Everyday materials were used in the designs to convey a modern and more accessible interpretation of luxury. Despite the show having to be rescheduled from its original April 7th show date, the show ran smoothly and successfully. It's the fashion event of the year. 2023's Met Gala happened just a few days ago on May 1st, and like always, stars came out to the red carpet dressed to the tee. This year's theme was Karl Lagerfeld, A Line of Beauty. For those who don't know, Karl Lagerfeld was a famous German fashion designer, most famous for being the creative director of the storied French fashion house Chanel. Now, without further ado, let's get into this year's fashion review with the biggest hits and misses. Who better to start us off than Pedro Pascal? A renowned household name, he took us all by surprise with his outfit. A risky move that definitely paid off in the end, he looked strapping in his Valentino outfit. The red overcoat and button-up fastened with his black tie, laced military boots paired with shin-high socks, and the black shorts to bring it all together. This is not a look many could pull off, and yet, Pedro Pascal killed it. Another fantastic red look was Salma Hayek, wearing a gorgeous red Gucci gown with a tiered skirt and a shiny corset, and pearl strands resting on her shoulders. She looked beautiful as always, and killed it with her outfit. Next we have Viola Davis, who looked stunning in her fuchsia pink Valentino gown. Of course, what's a custom Valentino gown without some extra flair? Which she definitely had, with the feathered detail on the top half. Personally, I love this look, as it's definitely an eye-catcher. Ki Hui Kwan also looked fantastic at this year's Met Gala. After his heartwarming Oscars acceptance speech, I don't know how anyone couldn't love him rocking a dark Dior men's suit and donning a pair of black sunglasses. He looked classy and incredibly handsome. Kim Kardashian, Kylie, and Kendall Jenner all looked amazing as well, each wearing a different designer and unique looks. Kendall Jenner donned a Marc Jacobs sequin bodysuit with flared sleeves that reached the floor and knee-high lace-up platform boots. Kim Kardashian wore a Shia Pirelli gown with extravagant detailing. Finally, Kylie wore a red Hayter Ackerman dress with matching red heels. The famous sisters did not come to play and definitely knew the assignment. Margot Robbie, who I know we are all excited to see as the newest live-action Barbie in July, was also in attendance, and her outfit did not disappoint. She looked stunning in her black Chanel gown, which was actually originally worn by Cindy Crawford in 1993. The flowy dress looked fantastic, a one-shouldered gown with a see-through corset midsection with gold chain-woven straps, and a black sash that extended over her shoulder and trailed down the front. And finally, here are two honorable mentions. Whilst interesting choices, but probably two of the best takes on the theme. Both Jared Leto and Doja Cat came to dress as Carl Lagerfield's cat, Choupette. Leto dressed from head to toe in a white cat suit, while Doja Cat kept it to a custom-made Oscar de la Renta white gown with feline makeup. They went all out for the theme and definitely attracted plenty of attention. That wraps up our 2023 Met Gala fashion review. Let us know your thoughts on this year's outfits in the comments below. On March 21st, the Virginia Tech Union and the Black Student Alliance hosted their annual spring concert at Burroughs Hall. Both the VTU and BSA are student-run organizations at Virginia Tech that help bring top-notch talent to Blacksburg every spring. This year's artists were the City Girls with Junie serving as the opener, the rap duo from Miami, performed a plethora of their hits including Act Up, Triculator, and Good Love. Tickets were sold the week leading up to the concert. Lower level seats were sold for $20 and upper level seats were sold for $12. The overall concert experience varied among students, as some felt the concert lived up to the hype, while others called it anticlimactic. 
One student said that the city girls were great performers, but were upset when they tried to get students on stage. Another student said that she loved the performance and would rate the concert a 10 out of 10. A lot of new movies and TV shows are hitting the screens this year, and some Virginia Tech students have controversial opinions on recent releases. Entertainment Tech reporter Nick Powell has more. Welcome back to Entertainment Tech segment On The Fly with me, Nick Powell. Uh, today we're going to be going around campus and just asking people some hot takes about movies and or TV shows. Just uh, kind of gauge what people are feeling about TV and that segment of the media and the current day. It's going to be fun, and this is our last segment of the semester. So stick around and enjoy it. What is a movie or TV show hot take that you have? There has not been a single good TV show that has come out in the past, like, 10 years. That, 10 except years. Except for Better Call Saul. That's a good Okay, one. except for Better Call Saul? Yeah, but I don't watch a lot of TV. So, so all my movies suck. All the Star Wars shit sucks. That all Star suck. Wars suck? Oh, anything that has... Okay, anything that's been produced by Disney in the past 10 years, besides Andor... Have you seen that show? Uh, I have not yet. It's okay, on my list. that's a good one. That's... That's it. You seen that one? Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. Everything else has been garbage. Okay, fair enough. Star Wars sequel movies suck. They're horrible. We've already got one uh, of those today. <laughs> although I don't think that's really a hot take. Most people I know think that. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people agree with that one. So, well, do you have a favorite TV show from the past like oh. ten years or so? It's gonna sound strange, but like Tom and Jerry, goaded. Tom and Jerry. Goated. Okay. I, I lived off of that stuff when I was younger. No, I did the same thing. I like that answer. I actually really do. Oh my God, I'm very passionate about this, okay? So the other day I went to um, watch a movie. It's, um, what was it called? Mario Kart, right? Oh yeah, so, the new Mario movie? Yeah. So okay. good. It is, I liked it, right? Okay. But I don't think it should be a kid's movie. Okay. okay. So based on a couple things, right? First of all, there are multiple scary scenes that like, I, be, I feel like my younger sister, like she's five years old, I feel like she would be like get scared because of them, you know? And like, why would we want to like have them watch those kind of like movies, you know? When yeah. we're trying to like, you know, we had like princesses and like cute stuff like that. Yeah, and, we got like frozen and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. I mean. But like, another example is that the, um, you know how like that monster or whatever wanted to marry that princess? Yeah. Like that was, I'm sorry, very messed up. Like I do not want I my baby sister agree. to be watching stuff like that. And like the kids get exposed to stuff like that and think that it's okay, you know? I very agree. It's so, like borderline harassment. No, it is. It was very, I was not, I did not approve of it whatsoever. So I don't think these kids movies should be like coming out like that. Like we need to draw a line somewhere, you know? These kids are like five years old that are watching and they should not be watching stuff like that. Fair enough. I totally agree. Quick question for an interview. No, stop moving. I was gonna ask him about Wednesday. A lot of crows that I've been talking to said there's um, some misrepresentation in their culture and they don't really like it. So I wanna see his take on that. Going around and asking people if they have like hot takes about movies or TV shows in recent years. I'm gonna say Office isn't that good. Okay, that is actually a very hot take. <laughs> I met a lot of people that are in love with The Office. Oh, I know what I'm saying, that's why I like hot take. Like, okay, very good. Like, Do you have an answer? Fast and Furious kind of sucks now, I guess. Yeah. No, okay, I, yeah. Not, yeah. I can agree with that. Like, I feel like if you made that like five years ago, everyone no, would have been like, that's, that's a hot true. take. But like, yeah, as but time like, keeps going on, everyone's I like, like, seven. Just like, yeah, it's just really like kind of gone downhill. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. So, what are any of your hot takes on movies or TV shows? Um, I don't know if this is a hot take, but I think that Michael Bay was probably the worst possible director for the Transformers franchise that could have ever possibly existed because he cares more about the government and hot women and stupid, terrible plots that don't actually follow each other um, than the legitimate continuities in the comics. Megatron was part of a slave race. That's what the Decepticons were, and they were just trying to fight for their home back and freedom. He was a poet, but they don't talk about that. Well, now after hearing your explanation, I don't think it would be a hot take. So we definitely got some hot takes today. Uh, one of my favorites was uh, the one about Michael Bay and his Transformers. Uh, they seemed very, very passionate about their hatred for Michael Bay. And I loved it. It was phenomenal. Uh, but thanks for tagging along with us. I hope that was entertaining. I had a lot of fun doing that. And this is going to be a wrap on the semester. Thanks, you guys, for uh, watching. Kenyon, what is one of your movie hot takes? I would have to agree with the lady who did the Transformers one. I respectfully agree that Michael Bay did not do a good job with the franchise. Really? You know, I kind of enjoy them. Maybe not all of them, but some of them. And they're a bit iffy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that wraps up this episode of Entertainment Tech. You can stay connected with us and other VTTV shows by following us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. 
Thank you again, and we'll see you next semester on Entertainment Tech.